Hello, my name is Ardi and we are going to solve assessment problem 7.4 from Nielsen and Riddle book. So this is the question. Uh, the first one is write the expression for the capacitor voltage Vt40 is greater than zero. Write the expression and blah blah blah. Okay, maybe we need to find out what happened before the switch is moved, right? So that is the first thing that we need to do. We need to analyze what happened at t is less than zero okay okay at t less than zero the switch is still in this position here so let's draw the current source here and we have 40 milliampere and then what and then we have a pair of resistor we have this one here is 2.7 kilo ohm 2.7 kilo ohm and what else we will have 3.3 kilo ohm 3.3 kilo ohm and the capacitor because it is has been in that position for a long time it has been in that position for a long time the capacitor becomes open circuit and this part here is the initial voltage of the capacitor so we'll have v0 here and let's set this node here as our ground so this part here is the same as v0 right okay and let's assume the direction of the current maybe this is going there this is going there and this is going there we can do kcl at v0 kcl at v0 KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Okay, the only current that goes in is that 40 milliampere. So we'll have 40 here. And that will equal to V0 divided by 2.7. Okay, and then what else? Plus V0 divided by 3.3. V0 divided by 3.3. Okay, maybe let's use our calculator because that is a not so great number. So we'll have 1 over 2.7 and plus 1 over 3.3. Okay, so we'll have 200 over 297 or maybe yeah we have that 200 over 297 multiplied by v0 and so v0 is yeah just still like that right divided by 200 yeah i think this will cancel into five right and that should be 297 divided by 5. Okay, so we will have V0. V0, v the voltage of the capacitor at time is equal 0, is 59.4. And the unit here will be 4. And this is will be an important value for the next question. Okay, so let's save this part here and let's clean up the board and now let's continue what happened after the switch is switch to the this position here so at t is greater than zero okay and let's draw that we will have a capacitor with the capacitance of 0 0.5 microfarad and then will we get from here we will have three kilo ohm and then we will have the 2.4 kilo ohm and we will have 3.6 kilo ohm here 3.6 kilo ohm yeah i think that's all right Okay, and what do they ask us for? Vt, here, the Vt. Okay, Vt. And 
and then i t okay i is here okay but we can simplify this circuit right okay let's do simplify so we can draw the capacitor here as 0 0.5 microfarad and replace the resistor by a single resistor so what will we have there okay let's name that r so we need to calculate the value of r the r is 3 in parallel with 2.4 plus 3.6 and that will be 3 parallel with 6 or 3 multiplied by 6 divided by 3 plus 6 that will be 9 okay let's cancel this out and this will be 2 ohm. okay not 2 ohm but 2 kilo ohm. so we will have the r here is 2 kilo ohm. okay uh now let's do a nodal analysis here okay let's set this as our ground and because this is p right uh, so this node here is also p and let's assume the direction is goes here and let's do kcl at node p kcl at p and KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the current that goes out. Okay, and the current that pass through a capacitor is C dV dt. So the capacitance itself is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 micro. So multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 dV dt. And then plus this one here is V divided by 2, but that is kilo ohm, so multiplied by 10 to the third power. All of that will equal to 0, right? Because there is no current that goes in, so we will have a 0. Okay, so this is a first order differential equation, and we have an initial condition so this one and this one. So we turn a circuit problem into a mathematical problem which is first order differential equation let's solve that but first let's clean up the board okay we have a, a differential equation with an initial condition and we can solve this by separation of variables so let's do that so we'll have 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 dv dt let's move this to the right hand side so we'll have minus v over 2 multiplied by 10 to the third power so we will have this one dv over dt here and that will equal to minus v but then i want to multiply this one okay maybe let's use our calculator 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 and then multiplied by 2 multiplied by 10 to the third power okay so this will be 1 over 1000 or that will be 10 to the minus 3 or we can just do dv over dt is equal to let's move this upwards so we'll have minus 10,000 v okay we can separate the variables let's move this v here and dt there so we will have dv over p is equal to minus 1000 dt. Okay, integrating both sides. And we will have ln p on the right, on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we will have minus 1000 t plus some constant c1. Okay. Or we can rewrite this as vt is equal to a e to the minus 1000 p why because e to the c1 is just another constant right so we need to find out what a is from this initial condition okay so if we plug t is equal zero to this equation so we will have a 
and e to the minus 1000 multiplied by 0, that will equal to 59.4. Therefore, A is 49.4 volt. Okay, so we will have VT is equal to 49.4 E to the minus 1000 T. And the unit will be volt. And that is the answer of question A, right? Okay, so next, next, let's move on to question B. But first, I need to clean up the board. Okay, so far we got TT is equal to this function here. And now we are asked about IT. IT is the current here. Okay, let's get back into circuit that T is greater than zero. We need to find out IT here. However, this is 3 kilo ohm is in parallel with this VT. So the voltage here will be the same as that. So this will be VT. And let's set this as our ground. So we can calculate IT here, which is VT divided by 2.4 plus 3.6. Okay. So let's do exactly that. We will have IT is equal to VT divided by 2.4 plus 3.6 okay so that will be vt divided by that will be six right six okay so we'll have it is equal to this vt divided by six which is i think 59.4 divided by six is 9.9 .9. so we'll have 9.9 .9 e to the minus 1000 t and what is the unit this is 4 and the 6 uh, is in kilo ohm so the unit here will be milliampere so we'll have this one and that is the same as this value here okay and now let's move on to the question c okay but maybe let's clean up the board again Okay, let's do question C. We need to find out the energy, but I know I want to calculate the initial energy first. Okay, the initial energy, the E will equal to 1 half C E squared, right? So they will have 1 half multiplied by the capacitance, which is 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 because that is micro. And then multiplied by the voltage squared. So we'll have 59.4 squared. And let's do calculator here. So we'll have 1 half multiplied by 0 0.5. Multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. And then multiplied by 59.4 squared. Okay, we will have 8.82, okay, 8.82 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4. Okay, the unit here will be joule. Or we can write it as 882 uh, millijoule, right? Yeah, millijoule. Okay. And now let's do energy dissipated, right? Energy dissipated by the 3 kilo ohm resistor, okay? The R is 3 kilo ohm. And then the time is 500 microsecond. Okay, remember that the energy dissipated is just power multiplied by time. But then the power is I squared R, right? So we will have, no, Vt, or Vt squared over R. So we will have, we will have that Vt squared over R multiplied by T. Okay, let's plug the number. What is V? V is this one, so I will have 49 multiplied 49.4 e to the minus 1000 
multiplied by 500. 500, but that will be millisecond. So 10 to the minus 6. And then this one is square. And then divided by R. What is R? R is 3 kilo ohm. So 3 to the 10 to the 3. 3 multiplied by 10 to the 3. And then T will have 500 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. Okay, now let's do calculator. Let's do fraction here. And on the top, we will have 59.4. And then E to the minus 1000 multiplied by 500 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 and then that will need to be square and then divided by 3 to the 10 to the third power and then multiplied by 500 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 oh that's complicated so we will have this value here, 2.16, 2.16 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4 joule. Or we can uh, convert this into millijoule, which is 216 millijoule. And if we are asked about the percentage, percentage, I think we can do 216 divided by 8a2 multiplied by 100 percent okay and that is what is it uh, okay we'll have 216 and then divided by 8a2 multiplied by 100 let's do so i will have 24.4 24 percent yeah 24 point something and I think that is the same, just rounding error. Uh, that's all for assessment problem 7.4. Hopefully this will help you to solve this problem. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.